saying anything. He wouldn't have said that he didn't say himself. But now his life has changed. And when he left my office, he gave me a bear hug and would not let go. And he's a big guy. And he cried on my shoulder in tears. And we could just feel the love between us. And I love that man now. And I didn't even know him a month ago. But it's an absolutely incredible, life-changing thing when you get involved with this. How will it affect your VA disability? It won't. It's beauty in the whole thing. All those things are private contracts. Private contracts. The nice thing about this whole thing is government cannot interfere in the obligation of contracts. It's that simple. Your Social Security is a private annuity contract with government. Your VA benefits, you earn them. You contracted for them. You might have served four years or 40 years, but you contracted. Government can't interfere in the obligation of those contracts. You put your heart in, your sweat, your money into these contracts, then you paid your side of the contract. They've got to pay their side of the contract. Okay? In 35 years, that question of, am I going to lose my Social Security? I have answered a hundred million times to the point I'm tired of answering. I've been tired of answering for two decades now. And I'm still answering that in every seminar. Never fails. People will keep, it, keep asking. We have so many tools in our toolbox. All of the laws on our side as state nationals. All of it. We have so much. So many tools in our toolbox to deal with. We have more toolbox than they do. Because what I've learned about perceived authority in 35 or 40 years is that they literally break the law to do what they're doing, whatever it is. And then just about every agency of government, they break the law. Look at Child Protective Services, for instance. Oh boy, there's a sheriff's department in Kentucky that does, did, had no idea what they did until, thank you, state nationals. We put the word out, we put the video clip out within an hour Thousands of people were calling that sheriff's department, burning up their phone lines, letting them know. Then they put out the absolute most incorrect television reporting on a, a, of a television station in Kentucky that I've ever seen in my life that was force-fed by the police department and every word in that television news, whatever you call it, was a lie. And you know, that news station got hammered by thousands of people around the world. We had people from England call them, tell them that it was a lie. First of all, Parents don't kidnap their own children. Now, if a parent kidnapped somebody else's children, that would be kidnapped. But they didn't kidnap their own children because they're a gift to them from God, not government. Second of all, they weren't felons. They've never been tried, convicted of any due process to even be a felon. In fact, there was no court order 
No order by a judge. Nothing. Not even a signed family plan from CPS in Minnesota that said they couldn't take their children and go visit their mother and grandmother in Kentucky. If they got to Kentucky to their mother's house, the child's grandmother, and the door was kicked in after two hours of trying to negotiate through the door. They said they wouldn't negotiate. Bull crap. They had me on the phone for two more than two hours trying to negotiate with the police through the door. Being quote, quoting real law, quoting the laws. And the police, we even called 911. Four times we were hung up on before they finally got the sheriff out there and woke him out of bed. We told him, he said, the sheriff's gone home for the night. Our office is closed. <laughs> what? He took an oath to the Constitution to serve the people, and he's there to protect the people. So we got him out of bed, got him over there to push the police off, and he did the absolute opposite of his oath and helped kick the door in. And thousands and thousands of people burnt up their phone lines for a couple of days. In fact, it only took a few hours, and we had it out there to millions. Understand, you put it on my channel, and right then and there, 45,000 people see it. And then they share it 20,000 times. And those 20,000 share it to millions. And we had people from around the world calling the Kentucky Sheriff's Office. I wouldn't want to be him right now. The last few days have been hell for him. Worse yet, so is Minnesota's. It ain't going to go well for those guys anymore. You know why? The American people have woke up. We're not going to put up with it. We're done with that. You show me where they have one contractual agreement with any private for-profit corporation acting to pretend to be government under the color of law in the state of Kentucky. Or Minnesota. They didn't have one. They had an order from a judge saying they couldn't take the child out of state. None. They didn't harm their child. CPS showed up at the hospital to inquire. And they asked their questions. And the parents left and went home. And they were home for days. Never heard from CPS until they went to the grandma's house in Kentucky, several states away from Minnesota. No order from a judge, no order from a family court, no due process of law. They'd never been accused of a crime. Never. Never through proper due process of law was there an investigation, was there a trial by a jury of one Spears or by any jury. Never was there anything to prove that they were guilty of something. They weren't. There was no victim. There was a CPS worker wanting to cause problems. who, after they left, went to the police with a report. A report that was accusatory, and it was opine and opinion. It had nothing to do with facts or law. 
Another had nothing to do with guilt or innocence. No investigation had been done. No due process had been done. And I'm going to tell you right now that the two acts of Congress that created Child Protective Services in the first place and funded them, Title IV of Social Security and ASFA, both of them clearly, it's clearly written down is the intent of Congress. And it says it's never government's intent to take a child from a parent. Both of those acts say that. And then a child is not to be taken from a parent without the parent's consent. Unless a parent, through proper due course of law, has been found guilty, that means there has to be a sheriff's investigation. That means there has to be reports written. That means it has to be recommended to a district attorney. That means the district attorney has to make a decision to prosecute that a crime has been committed. That means there has to be evidence, there has to be sworn affidavits, there has to be cooperating witnesses. That a crime has been committed for them to be tried through proper due process of law, where they are allowed to put on evidence to question their accuser, to put on witnesses on their behalf, to have a jury of their peers, to have fundamental fairness. Those are due process. And all those things have to take place, including a sentencing, for them to be convicted of a felony. And then and only then can Child Protective Services, if the parents have been found guilty of a felony, take a child away from a parent. And then they're supposed to look for a relative, like the grandmother, to place a child with. And if no relative steps up to the plate, then and only then because they place a child temporarily with a third party. And that's the intent of Congress. It's in both acts. Yet what they do is they create an agency, they give them the intent of Congress, they codify it, and then the agency creates policy. <coughs> And that policy over time gets morphed into something incredibly ugly to the point where 88% of the children who come through are rescued from child trafficking came through some child protective services agency. And I get the reports every month from every state. And I can tell you that Maricopa County alone 55 to 60 children disappear out of their system. I guarantee if a child disappears out of the state system, it's going into trafficking. Because I spent more than 30 years fighting that. I know what I'm talking about to the point I was put on a presidential task force on child trafficking. Probably know more about it than just about anybody in the country. And I can show you the flow charts and the evidence and the dossiers of the traffickers because my team built the cases. And I get sick and tired of it. And it starts off with a CPS agent creating a cause of action. A lot of times an anonymous complaint and they show up at school. They don't follow the law. They follow policy. And every agent of government, that's all they do anymore. To the point where it's gotten corrupt. And darn it, we as people want to believe they're doing, trying to do the right thing. That they can't be that evil. We want to believe that. But that ain't what the numbers tell us 
And it ain't just the numbers. How about the 100 to 150 phone calls, emails, and text messages that I get every day? Every day. You know what it's like reading or hearing from 50 parents across the country a day? What it's like hearing from a half a dozen people in prison a day that didn't commit a crime where there was no victim, they didn't injure anybody, they didn't hurt anyone, and they're sitting in prison? I know people that are in prison today that have been there more than 30 years and never committed a crime. And we have the 